but with inequalities. Alright, so for the first one, um, we could have started off by distributing 15 is less than or equal to 24x minus 12 minus 9x. Combine your like terms. And add 12 on both sides. And divide. So if you got a decimal, that was accurate. I don't know what decimal is, but. So your number line could have been a bunch of different things. You could have used whole numbers, put it in the middle, you could have used decimals, you, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to make up a random one. Let's say I go 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. This is not the number line you needed to do. You could have done whatever you wanted. I just thought of something easy really quick. So the direction this is, the x is not on the right side, so you have to read it backwards. x is greater than or equal to 1.8, or you can rewrite it. Flip the entire thing so that the direction is pointing to or away from x is the same. So x is greater than or equal to close circle at 1.8, everything greater than that. What if you run it yes. So if you kept it this way, that's fine, as long as you graphed it this way. Why did you flip the same thing? Um, just to make it look so that they match the direction of the arrow and the direction of the inequality, so that they match. You don't have to. If this makes sense to you and you graph it the right way, you can leave it. Other questions on that one? Two was very much the same, or similar, I should say. Um, so eight minus six x minus eighteen is less than four x minus five. Combine like terms. Move constants to one side, variables to the other. How you do that was up to you. Um, let's say I do all the diagrams. And move the constants. You have negative 10x is less than 5. This one also was a decimal or a fraction. So, how you did your number line again was up to you. Let's say I did it like this. Can you believe it was So, I just counted by point five. This would be open. At negative 0.5, going to the left. Is it open because it doesn't have the lines underneath? Correct. Do we have any questions on this one? And then number four was very much the same thing. Solve this. You could combine like terms first or wait, it doesn't matter. When you start to solve this, so let's say you get rid of the 18. Wait, 18. 
Fifteen. I combined the like terms. Oh. Okay. And all the lights. So when do I move the eighteen to the other side, the x's disappear. Unlike when we were solving multi-step equations, we could say this was no solution, infinitely many solutions, whatever. Yes. Why didn't you add seven first? It doesn't matter. I could have done that. You would have gotten the same thing. So let's say I did do that part first. So it does not matter which way you do this. Oh, okay. The point is, either way, the x's disappear. But unlike with multi-step, this would not be no solution, infinitely many. You would look at this and say, is this a true statement? Is 0 greater than 15? No. So this is false. It becomes a true or false. It no longer is a no solution, infinitely many. It's just false. Yes, it is false. If they disappeared and it was true, you would get true. Yes. Oh, uh, I was going to say, how would you get true? Would it be equal? Um, if it was equal or, let's say, I got 8 is greater than 5, that would be a true. Something that is actually true. Other questions on this? Okay. Let's start this. You'll notice that uh, when we start these notes, they'll be very similar to what we did before, what we were just doing. It's just some rules we have to follow. So at this point, if you were taking notes before, you'll have time to do that afterwards. Go ahead and close laptops. Because apparently, you know, Gray, close laptops. Write this down. This is the definition for compound inequalities, which is what we're talking about today. Two inequalities or more, in this class it'll just be two, um, joined together with the words and or the word or. You can graph this example. Or inequalities have a tendency to graph apart. So as you're graphing this example, this would be like the final answer. The answer you get at the end, x is less than or equal to negative 2, or x is greater than 3. So you would graph that like normal. Close circle for the equal inequality, open circle for the not equal inequality. Putting in opposite directions or inequalities graph apart from each other, they should not cross. Interval notation we touched on um, last class. This is basically the same format as this, but using parentheses and square brackets. Reading left to right, this starts, it keeps going left to negative infinity. It stops at negative 2. It is a closed circle, so that is a square bracket. The word or goes in between it. It starts again at 3. It's open, so parentheses. And then it keeps going to the right for the infinity. Infinities are always parentheses. We're going to practice that. Why not? Depends on the direction you're going. Why create an all-encompassing term if it's not all-encompassing? I did not create it, so I don't know. I'd like to have a word with whoever we created. It's amazing. I'd like to have several words. Very strongly. Do we have a word with 
have any questions on how this is graphed. Did you just break your face there? No. Oh, what? You have YouTube face there. You have straight? No. I have straight on my face. Anyone still writing this down? I'm going to do my face. I have it on Okay, we're going to start this and it's not going to be For example number one, you solve these two separately. They have nothing to do with each other. You solve one, you solve the other. So for this one, how would I solve for x? Add four to both sides. Add four to both sides. How would I solve the other one? Divide both sides by two. When you when there's nothing else left to do, put an or in between them. Graph both of them. It does not matter which one you do first. This one would be open at negative three, going to the left. This one would be closed at six, going to the right. We'll do the interval notation part when we come back. <laughs> Parentheses. 
Write the word or. Where does it start again? Or, parentheses. And where does it end? On any of that. Uh, how do you determine if it's brackets or parentheses? The sign. So or the circle. So if the signs are strictly less than, strictly greater than, or they are open circles, those are parentheses. Infinity, negative and positive, are in, are parentheses no matter what. But if these were closed circles or had equal to underneath, those would be square brackets. Other questions on that one? Let's skip four and do five. Right. On this side, if we are solving, what could be on this side? There are really two ways to do this one. That's why I said what could be. Negative 6x minus 3 is less than negative 15. Get rid of 3, add it to the other side. Divide both sides by negative 6. Remember that when we divide by a negative, the sign changes direction. So this is now going to be x is greater than positive. Um, if we want to see this after we finish the rest of this, I can show you the other way to solve that one. Okay. What would we do for the second inequality? And what are we dividing by on both sides? Negative one. So is the sign going to change here? Dividing by a negative. So if they're like uneven, your answers, you can just write or in between, but make sure you have arrows drawn or something. Or you could rewrite it, either or. Scrap those two. X is less than negative 4, it's going to come first. So it's going to be closed to the left or to the right. And then x is greater than 2, is that open or closed? Open. At 2, going to the right. Okay. Interval notation, where does it start? Negative infinity. Where does it stop? Negative 4 parentheses or bracket? Closed. So square bracket, or it starts again at two parentheses or bracket, parentheses for that one, and where does it end? Questions on that? Yes. If you divide by a negative, do you have to flip the sign? Always. Now. That's only if you're, what you're dividing by is negative. If this were 6x and this were negative 12, you wouldn't change the sign. Does anyone want to see how we would solve this the other way? When you finish that one, go on to the next page. So those are your or equals. They got the part. There are two separate graphs. You solve them separately. Then we have our and inequalities. Let me have you go ahead and write this. And and or inequalities are opposites. If or inequalities have a tendency to graph apart, and inequalities have a tendency to graph together, so they're going to point to each other. I'm draw this, but I'm going to add more to it. So if this is our example. And sometimes you see it like this, sometimes you see it like this, it depends. 
Mine, you'll see more like this. But Delta Math, you may see some like this. The process is really the same. So while you're writing this part down, I'm going to explain this part. If I were to graph both of these, so let's say x is greater than negative 6, I have a closed circle going to the right. And then x is less than or equal to 1 would also be a closed circle. I'll draw this one here. Just that one. Going to the left. Because eventually they overlap, you're looking for that overlapping piece. And that's really all you're drawing, that overlapping piece. Now you can draw all three, but you have to at least show the overlap. You can do all three, or you can just do the overlap from this point to this point. So when we do the interval notation, because we're looking from just this point to this point, it's going to be, these are either going to be uh, closed or open parentheses or square bracket. No infinity for these ones from start to end. That's it. And we write it a different way. So here was what was given, but because it usually falls between two endpoints, they write it like this. It means the same thing, it's just condensed. So when you write your answers, I'll have to see it like this, condensed. You can solve it like this, but then go back and write it like this. And I'll show you how to do that. Yes, yeah. Um, I was going to say that in the next thing that I'm going to do, I'll connect to the slides because I'm going to close. Yeah, they'll do it all over like this. Yeah, I would do that, but like when I was graphing it, it was like, I was graphing it, I was graphing it, I was graphing it, I was graphing it. So that, you'd have to show me the example. Anyone else will need this one? Yeah, let's do this for the example. Yes. So in this example, your goal is to get x by itself. Whatever is inside here, you want to get by itself. So I'm going to show you how to do it all together and then show you how to do it separately and make it come back together. So if I'm trying to get x by itself, I have to get rid of this 4. But unlike the or, whatever I do here, I'm doing this to everything. So here I would subtract or to everything. The inside and the outside pieces. We have negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 5. So if you're solving it all together, this is your condensed inequality. If you are just graphing one endpoint, or from one endpoint to the other, you start here, you look at this sign, it's closed, so this would start at negative 2, it would be closed, it would end at 5, that would be open, and you're just going to draw a line that connects it. But if you wanted to draw all three to make sure that this is where they overlap, You could either do it this way, or when I separate it, that would all come up. I can look at just this. X is less than 5. That part makes sense. Start at 5. It's open. Everything below that. But the other part, I have to read backwards. I have to start in the middle and then read this way. X is greater than or equal to negative 2, or read it like this. Know that this part and this are the same. So that would start at negative 2 and go to the right. What I have in red you don't need. You can do, but you don't need. What I have in blue you do need. Questions on that part before I show you how to separate. When you're practicing, if you haven't already seen this, when you're practicing this on the map, some of them may be like this. Some of them may already be separated and you don't have to do this part. If you would like to separate it, if it helps you, cover up one of the numbers, write that. So 2 is less than or equal to x plus 4. That would be one part. And then get rid of the other half. x plus 4 is less than x. So then you have two separate inequalities and you would solve them both. 
like you did for or. Notice that you get the same numbers as long as you do your math correctly. You have two separate inequalities that you could graph. X is less than 5. You have to read this backwards. X is greater than or equal to negative 2. And then you could see where they overlap. You would still, at the end, have to put it together. So look at the symbols. You're always going to make them go less than or less than or equal to. They'll always be facing the same direction if you separate them. X will always be in the middle. So whether you want to separate, bring it back together, or just solve as is, is up to you. Questions on that? The interval notation part. You're just writing from start to end. This is open. Sorry, this is closed, so square bracket. This is open, so parentheses. Sometimes they will be a mixture like this, square bracket and parentheses. Sometimes they'll just be parentheses. Sometimes they'll just be square brackets. Questions on any of that? Let's do eight. And I'll let you guys choose. Do we want to solve this as a combined inequality or as two separate? Combined. Okay. So for this, we're again trying to get x by itself. Get rid of the four first. Add it to everything. So we have negative 12 is less than or equal to 3x, which is less than or equal to 6. And then divide everything by 3. It's condensed. We can graph it. So our graph, both of them would be closed. You have a point at negative 4 and a point at 2 with a line in between. If you want to do the extra, you're more than welcome to do so. Interval notation, this starts at negative 4. They're both closed, so both square brackets. Ends at 2. much like what we were just doing, get rid of 12. Ten is less than 2x, which is less than or equal to 16. Divide everything by 2. So when we graph this, would 5 be open or closed? Sometimes your lines are really short, depends on how. Interval notation, since 5 is open, would it be parentheses or bracket? Would 8 be parentheses or bracket? <coughs> now, I'm going to mention this, just in case it happens, but it may. Let's say you got to here, but on the inside this was negative. So I'm just going to rewrite this. This is a hypothetical case. And 
when you go to divide, because of the rule, you have to change all the signs. So, one of the rules is we have to change the direction of the sign. The other rule is when in this format for and, it always has to be less than or less than or equal to. So, we have to take this whole thing and flip it. So you would start out with everyone is smallest, negative 8, flip all the signs so that they're less than, keep x in the middle, and just rearrange it. You won't see it like this, you would see it more like this. But that's if you have a negative in the middle. If you don't have a negative in the middle, don't flip your signs. In a second, I'll go back up to eight because in case you missed it. Are there any others that we skipped over one through ten that we want to see you go over and have questions about? Or on the next page, one through ten on that page. show you one, two things in Desmos really quickly. So you can use this while you are um, practicing to check yourself. Um, this doesn't really work in the calculator as well. Okay, so I'm going to do the um, number one that we did on the front. I'm going to put in both inequalities in separately. So x minus 4 is less than negative 7. And then 2x is greater than or equal to 12. So you kind of see the same thing that happened when we graphed it. You see it starts at one place, and then if I were to zoom out, it would keep going in both directions. So this one is going to keep going towards negative infinity. This one's going to keep going towards positive infinity. We'll talk about what these dashed and solid lines mean next class. But that will help you see at least numbers and where is it going. And then if I were to put in number 10 that we just did, I'm going to put this in all at once. Negative 2 is less than 2 parentheses. x minus 6 is less than or equal to 4. Um, you have to put these in separately as well. There we go. Um, how we separated that, whichever one we separated, you have to put them in as two separate things. But you can see where they overlap. So that would start here. And here, and it would just be in between those. Questions on how to check yourself in decimals? Okay. So for the remainder of class, you have I didn't do it, so, okay. you have a dust map on this that you do on Friday, a dust map on what we did last class on just solving them in general, which is also due Friday. So you can knock both of those out. You could keep working in this packet, or you could be working on free safe work slash missing text. We shouldn't be on our computers doing other things. We shouldn't be on our phones.
make sure you're working on one of those things. Let me know if you need my help. Work together.